Welcome to the teaching ministry of David T. Demola. Open your heart to receive as Pastor Demola teaches the uncompromised Word of God. Tell somebody, God will open doors that I can't open. He'll make a way where there is no way. He'll even touch the king's heart if he has to. told you I may not get to finish this. Chapter 2, verse 17, then said I unto the people, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. God has to bring people together, and he has to bring people together with a heart to serve him. He's got to bring others. He just can't put it on me and then have nobody support me. He couldn't put it on Nehemiah and not have people support Nehemiah. God puts a vision on us, and then all of a sudden the people rise up and rise up. And notice the next verse of what Nehemiah said. He said, here, <laughs> what's going on? I love kids. I love kids. I love kids. Come on. Look at how handsome he is. Love his hairdo also. <laughs> Verse 18, chapter 2, then, I told them of the hand of my God which was good upon me. You'll find that repeated. Ne Nehemiah kept saying, everything I'm doing is because God put his hand on my life. God anointed me. God touched me. It was God that gave me the heart, the vision. It was God that raised up this place. I'm telling you that no man could ever plan on what God has done here over the years. No man could ever plan how God has raised this thing up. I'm telling you, you couldn't figure it out if you had 190 IQ. It's the good hand of God. It's the good hand of God. And they said, and they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. I'm not coming to you today about a building. I didn't come to talk to you about building a youth building. That's just a, a pimple on an elephant's backside. I'm talking to you about what God says I'm going to raise up. I said, I'm talking to you about what God said I'm going to raise up. It's more than a building. It's a building of kingdom principles. It's a building of men and women of God. It's a building up of the repairing of the breach. It's God saying, I put you in this place, in the bullseye of this state, so that people could look at that place and say, there is a place of peace. There is a place that I can go and I can find the anointing to get me free. I can bring my kids there and they can be raised up in an atmosphere of peace and of joy and of love. Come on, help me. I came to tell you today, let us rise up and build. Huh. Mm. Verse 19. Don't you wish verse 19 wouldn't be in the Scripture? <laughs> Sent Balak the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, the Geshem, the Arabian heard it, and they laughed us to scorn. Despised us, saying, what is this thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? They didn't even know where they came from. People don't even know where you came from. They don't know what God's raised you up to do. I want to tell you something about when you serve God. You don't have to go looking for trouble. <laughs> trouble is always looking for you. All you got to do is get a word from God, and you can expect trouble to knock at your door. 
right. That's right. And there's a purpose in the enemy's plot, scheme, plan, strategy. He wants to discourage you. He wants you to give up before you get the prize. He wants you to quit. He wants you to get discouraged. I know I'm talking to at least one person in here that's been discouraged over the past in your life. You dreamed, you, you dreamed big, you believed God, and you haven't seen the manifestation. I love what Sammy said today. God made a promise without a date. He said, I'm going to be with you until the end of the age. As long as the age is still here, God says, I'm with you. You're more than a conqueror. I came to bless you and to provide for you and to prosper you. I came to show you my glory and my power. So all you got to do is hang in there, brother. Tell somebody next to you, you got to hang in there. You got to hang in there. No time to quit. No time to quit. No time to give up. Let me show you what happens with people of God that have courage. This is what Nehemiah says when he hears this. He said, then answered I them and said, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build, but you will have no portion, no right, no memorial in Jerusalem. In other words, you can stand by and watch us. I'll never forget just before we left Cooper Avenue, we were so crowded in there, you couldn't get anybody else in that building. And I had announced that God was leading us to a piece of property on Oak Tree Road. We were going to buy it. I don't know. I, my wife and I were talking about it. I think it took two years, a little over two, two and a half years, we paid Cooper Avenue off. We had, I'll never forget when we burned the mortgage. Oh, I'm looking forward to that day. We're gonna, we ain't going to burn the mortgage in a little can here. We're going to have a bonfire outside. And it's coming. This could be the year. Man walked up to me one day when I announced it. He was supposed to be a big giver. Never forget it. Walked up to me just as arrogant as a peacock. Put his chest out, Kathy, like that. So you're building. I looked at him strange. I said, yeah. Don't you feel crowded in here? Don't bother me a bit. This is exactly what he said to me. He looked at me, and he said to me, you can go build but I ain't going to be a part of it. My family and I are leaving today and never coming back. I felt tempted. I felt so tempted to say, don't let the door hit your backside on the way out. But I refrained myself, and I just said to him, adios, amigo. How sad it is that there are some people who will stand in the way of what God is up to. I've heard it said, said it last night, I've heard it said, we don't need another building here. Yes, we do. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? I just know it. I know we need another building because every time we stop moving forward because somebody doesn't like it, and somebody be critical of it, we are, we are playing right into the hands of Sanballat and Tobiah. Because there are modern-day Sanballats who have been raised up to discourage us and stop us and tell us, you can't do that. If I were to listen to that carnal Christian who tried to stop us from going to Oak Tree Road, we would have never been through that phase. 
And then when we got there, we had people, I had people tell me, what are we going to, another place? Yep, we're going down to Sayreville. Must not be God. They keep voting us out. No, I said, must be God because there must be something big because we keep getting roadblocks. And they left. And they left. Sometimes you're blessed when certain people leave. <laughs> Come on, shout amen with me. Yes. Had a bunch of people one time when we were on Oak Tree Road. Our congregation began to get more colorful. <laughs> yeah, come on, say amen with me. Yes. And some people said, uh, we, we, we can't have our our children in, in children's church with all those, all those, all those, all those, all those. You know where I'm going. Come on. After all, you know, uh, you know, they, they might grow up to marry them. I'm coming at you today, so just be cool. We ended up calling that church the Church of the White Flight. <laughs> How dare anybody say that Amen. to God's people? You don't fall in love with somebody because of a race. You fall in love with somebody because it's the person that God has aligned them up to be for the rest of your life. So cut the junk. At every stage, there have been those people who have put a roadblock. And I trust today that there is nobody in this house right now that will put a roadblock into what God is saying. I've come to tell you like the modern-day Nehemiah today, we were going to rise up and build and, be, and come on, and we're going to do what God told us because the good hand of God is on me today. I wonder how many have the good hand of God on them today. No, you don't have to look from tr for trouble. It'll find you. It'll always come in the form of mockery and intimidation. Sometimes it'll come from within, from people who, have, who, who think they're, who say they're a part of you, but they're not. And it'll come in dis deception and discouragement. But the best defense is a good offense. So we pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we get the mind of God. We declare things. Oh, glory to God. Let me, let me, let me share a little. Can I share a little insight with you? Because I think this is powerful. I believe that God intercepts some of our prayers. <laughs> yeah, when you hear this, you'll like this. God literally intercepts some of our prayers. Because we're praying in a certain direction, and God intercepts that. So here we are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that that woman is for me. And when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we're praying, and we're praying, say, no, that prayer that he just prayed was not the right one. So I'm praying, the Holy Ghost is praying to us. No, that's not the right woman for him. So, no. You didn't get that. How many of you pray in the Holy Ghost? How many of you know that there is a Holy Ghost? <laughs> you better get ready to do some classes for me. I'm really serious. It's one of the visions God gave me, that we need Holy Ghost classes. Better get ready to teach some classes on faith. We're losing out on the simple things of faith. Learning how to pray in the Holy Ghost. When we know not what to pray for as we ought, the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or articulated in human speech. We pray in the Holy Ghost. We pray the mind of God, the will of God. It bypasses our knowledge, our wisdom, our plans, our vision, and brings God's plan to us. He intercepts our prayer. So the people come together. I wish I had more time to do this today. 
This really is a series of messages that I'm impacting into one. Here's what I believe a good defense is with offense. Be prayerful, be alert, be prepared, be united, and be determined that no matter what comes your way, you are not breaking ranks. You got to tell somebody, we are in this together. Tell somebody, we're in this together. Ah, uh, tell them like you really mean it. Tell them, we're in this thing together. <laughs>